Hola chicos, hoy estamos en Namur, en una ciudad de Bélgica, en una ciudad preciosa y vamos a visitar una de las pequeñas tiendas que hay aquí en Namur de la alta fidelidad. Vamos a hablar con Pierre. Eh, hemos estado hablando también con su compañero Jeremy, que es el que nos ha puesto en contacto. Y bueno chicos, eh, os invito a la tienda. Espero que os guste la entrevista, ya que la hemos hecho. Y, y bueno, a ver qué, qué os parece. Muy buenas tardes, eh, estamos en Namur, eh, una ciudad de Bélgica. Y hoy vamos a estar con Pierre en eh, su tienda que lleva ya más de 25 años. Se llama, que lo pronuncie muy bien, la Maison de la Ute Fidelity. Pierre, eh, thank you, thank you for all this. And uh, well, if you want to introduce yourself, uh, your name is Pierre, and you're more, you're more than 25 years. Yeah. yeah, so I'm Pierre and I'm running this shop, La Maison de la Haute Fidelité, <laughs> the longest name <laughs> in the industry. And uh, well, I'm doing that since uh, 27 years. Um, and we are here in a little city that is very, very pleasant. Uh, not, uh, not a big city, uh, 100,000 people, uh, more or less. And it's, I'm going to do this in English, uh, if possible. If I if I'm stuck, uh, I will go on in French. Exactly. Maybe. <laughs> exactly. If you want to talk in French, be free. Uh, hey, Pierre. Uh, one of the first questions I like to to interview today. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's um, uh, how do you start in the music? That your first steps and your first mm -hmm. thoughts about it. So, uh, as I told already, my family was not involved in music. We, in fact, we didn't listen to music at home. Uh, and, uh, but as, as far as I can remember, I wanted to play music. And uh, so I started with uh, clarinet. You know. But my uh, intention was to play violin. And uh, there was no violin class in, my, in, in the country. Uh, well, it, it, You know, I was living in the country and it was difficult to find some uh, lessons. So after a few, uh, two or three years of clarinet, I had an opportunity to start violin. Um, and uh, at this time, I think I was 11 or 12, something like that. But, and uh, so I became quite quickly a teenager and uh, my My dream at that time was to become a rock star, you know. Yeah, normal. Eh? <laughs> It's normal. Eh? I wanted to be uh, John Bonham, you know. And, uh, John Bonham didn't play violin, so I switched to drums. <laughs> And uh, well, uh, it's a long time ago. I don't play any music uh, for a long time now, but but it gave me a strong taste for for music. For, Uh, all type of music. Which age? What is it? What is this? Which uh, was your age? Uh, When is I believe? Or? Oh, it, it was before yeah, 15, 15, 16, uh, yeah. when I was drumming. Uh, so, uh, and, and then I, I, I started to study uh, um, acting, theater. Uh, and after that, uh, as I didn't came a uh, cinema, movie star, neither. So, <laughs> Neither a rock and roll star, neither a movie star. Mm -hmm. I decided to <laughs> go to my second passion, music, exactly. as, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, via you know through the hi-fi shop. And uh, I started in a, in a shop nearby uh, uh, in Brussels, where, where I lived at that time. Yeah. Uh, and then another shop, and then the third shop. And then uh, I, I decided to to do mine. Uh, and you started directly with this one, or you started with any So, one? Uh, after my experiences with uh, uh, others in, in Brussels, a few shops, three shops, in, in fact, I, I, I worked there for uh, four or five years, uh, and uh, I lost two times my job, because it was difficult at that time for my bosses, um, and I, I decided to fire, the, the next that would fire me, was myself uh, in the future. And I decided to start a shop, uh, not in Brussels because I didn't, I didn't feel it. I wanted to be in a smaller city, uh, less, maybe less concurrency, but uh, something um, quite simple. And I started really small uh, with uh, little money, I, I must say. And uh, well, it's still quite small as you can notice. <laughs> 
<laughs> very cozy, very cozy. Yeah, very cozy because yeah. we, I, I like it like that. Yeah, I, of course. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, is the only um, uh, this shop is the only one here around of about five? Well, okay. nowadays yes. Whole, uh, we, we, I had a lot of conferences here at yeah. a certain time, uh, but uh, well, uh, times are quite harsh uh, and. Uh, some uh, retired, some uh, made uh, bad business, let's say, okay. and uh, I'm almost alone uh, in the center of Namur, anyway. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> because here in La Maison, uh, you're not only working with height, I'm working with all kinds of speakers, no? so your public is uh, quite uh, reduced, or do you think it's more...? We, we want to be uh, a shop for um, everybody, I mean, Namur, uh, for example, has a lot, a lot of students, and we, we want to be there for them too, uh, with uh, little things like headphones, earbuds, you know, Bluetooth uh, speakers. Yeah. And anyway, those products are not specifically uh, high quality uh, hi fi kits, but they, they give you the opportunity to listen to music. Uh, any moment of the day, anywhere, anytime. So I think it's a, a good compliment to uh, hi fi, uh, proper hi fi. To so your public is uh, because usually the hi fi, as we talked before, the community is very reduced, usually the people with uh, money. Mm. But you think uh, young people is coming to see this world as well? Or? Yes, that, that's absolutely noticeable uh, of these few last years because. Um, what what really changed the game is the turntable finally it's it's crazy all the young people are uh, dedicated to vinyl they, they discovered it uh, a few years ago and they are crazy with vinyl sound with the object itself uh, it's very cool uh, they didn't know that owning your own your own music is is uh, such a pleasure and uh, what is uh, what is amusing me is that I noticed that a lot of young people buy it. Meaning, they buy LPs, but they don't own any turntable. So they have a collection with uh, dozens of vinyl, and they don't even have a proper way to listen to it. And they just come after, uh, asking me, I have a collection, how do I do to, to play it? Exactly, this new uh, wave again with the vinyl mm -hmm. uh, is not an accident, you know. Oh, no, 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 sure. Uh, yeah. I think it was uh, a mess, well, not a mess, because it was, for me, it's the uh, MP3. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You live, uh, well, you started so before MP3. Uh, do you remember these days about it? Or? Well, uh, what, what I... Or for I, you, was I, 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 I always had, uh, uh, you know, physical supports, uh, physical... Uh, like CDs, uh, of course, uh, vinyl when I started uh, in the mid of the 90s, vinyl was almost done. Uh, uh, it was quite rare to, to, to say the turntable at that time. Mm -hmm. So uh, everything was uh, for the CD at that time. Uh, but then came MP3 and free music. All the music of the world for free of charge uh, with, uh, you know, the, the downloading. And this uh, period was probably uh, explain why people are now coming back to something uh, of quality and to, you know, a choice. I, 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 I choose to buy this because I like it, mm. I value it. Uh, I don't want to have all the music for nothing. That, that, that's crazy because I, I can't even that's listen to it all. So uh, the, the idea is that if I, if I own something, I think nowadays I prefer having a vinyl because it's bigger, it's more beautiful, mm -hmm. uh, it's more pleasant to listen to, and it's, it's, uh, it's a choice I made. I sit down, I listen to my vinyl, and I take my time to listen to it. So it's a pure activity. It's a pure pleasure. It's not a bit of music while doing something else. That's what I like about nowadays, exactly. uh, more uh, than uh, yeah. 10 years ago. Let's say. I, I, I start, I lived with this 10 years ago. I, it was amazing about uh, I had the CDs mm -hmm. and suddenly MP3, and for mm -hmm. me it was a, a discovery. But later you see, uh, when you start to 
escuela de terminos y ganar el primer set de MPG. But was, uh, it was another one, I think, was the beginning of digital, so it was good as well, but uh, no one's like it, as the people said, but well, uh, for me it was okay in the moment. No, 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 I, I don't say uh, uh, digital is, uh, is uh, unpleasant, it's just that it, it was, maybe there was a, a mistake uh, at the beginning, that mm -hmm. when uh, media is silent, people thought it was good because it was, it was silent, you know, but it's a mistake, it's not good because it's silent, uh, it, it's, it's good because it's pleasing, because it movies you, uh, you know, uh, that, that's, that's what maybe was a bit uh, difficult with the CD at first, it was a bit harsh, but uh, digital has evolved. Long way, and yeah, you know, we have fantastic. It's amazing, yeah? it's amazing. Yeah. No, no, uh, of I want to ask you uh, when you go to the shop, but in, in your house, you got like a room or special? No, no, no. I, um, I, I don't have such a big house, and I don't need to. I'm a family man, I have four kids, um, and uh, we we do things together. That, that's the way. So, uh, uh, hi fi is shared as mm -hmm. well as meal, <laughs> and uh. Uh, so I'm listening to, to music in my main room. Uh, uh, do, do you got a um, uh, preferred format? I mean, uh, do you prefer any format? Uh, like uh, uh, the music lover, they like a uh, vinyl style. Uh, I, I met people like digital. And uh, personal, I like CD even. The format is, uh, mm. but I don't know why. Uh, I really like in my, in my, in my yeah. music room. The music room is yeah. my, my sofa. With the, I, I used to use CD, but uh, for you, in which uh, format? Uh, I have to be honest, I don't have any uh, turntable at home. Uh, you don't say it, eh? <laughs> don't say, <laughs> don't say it. No, no, no. But uh, you got kind of, and uh, <laughs> somewhere I'm sorry. But I have uh, quite a good vinyl collection. Yeah, I yeah, <laughs> don't listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it happens, eh? It happens. Yeah. Many people I, got their vinyl and... Uh, My wife is asking me, asking me all the time, please mm. bring back a turntable. But I don't <laughs> have space to, to, to play oh, it. Yeah, so. yeah. For now, it's a bit difficult, but it will come back uh, in a few years. But with, four, with four kids, it's normal, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm listening to um, uh, covers and, uh, um, and Tidal. Uh, you, you, got, you got apps and, like Tidal, yeah, uh, of course. And I have CDs as well, uh, mm. quite a lot. Uh, so I'm listening to CDs sometimes as well. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you about the products you get here in, in La Maison. Mm -hmm. um, you got any? Um, well, first of all, I want to ask you the difference between the amplifiers with, uh, how do you say, valvulas, uh, mm -hmm. valvulas, valves, well, valves, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and without the normal ones, the valves. I didn't know about nothing about it, mm -hmm. and uh, well, I, I discovered, well, and actually, I don't know the difference. And if you can tell me, kind of, well, the valve technique is the oldest one. Mm -hmm. It was before solid state, before transistors, you know. So uh, there, there wasn't at that time any other way to amplify a song. Um, but if we still use valves nowadays, it's because it has something. Really, it's, it's quite difficult to describe because, you know, amplifying uh, electricity, it happens so fast. Uh, how, can you, how can you describe technically a difference. What is, what, what is really hearable in the song is the amazing amount of harmonic in the song. So you, you have a true uh, a long uh, song, the long shape of the song decreasing very, very slowly. So it describes any little movement uh, inflection in, in, in a voice in the end of the sound of a guitar of a keyboard it sounds so long with probably but I am not a technician so I cannot tell this uh, for sure but the pleasant harmonics electric harmonics are even so if you have a, a you know a frequency of 60 Hertz let's say and you have an, an harmonic of 120 and then another one of 240 you see it's really even 
and it's uh, euphonic, so it sounds quite nice to your brain, to your ear system. It's it's not something personal. So it's not a judgment. It's just it's some really. euphonic. And some uh, solid state uh, products have probably more of an uneven uh, uh, harmonic, you know, not that pleasant for the, the human brain. Maybe it's an explanation, an explanation there. Uh, more uh, euphonic harmonics gives you something more uh, enjoyable. It, it might be there. I'm not. I'm not the, the one who, who will tell no. you. Uh, valve tubes are like this, and solid state uh, like that. It doesn't. It doesn't uh, work like that. It's far more complicated. But even uh, well, each time I want to say, each time I listen to some tube or, or hybrid uh, uh, amplifier, I know I'm noticing something really. Uh, lively in quiet moments. It's not. It's never dead. No, it's really lively, and uh, that's something I like. But I must say, uh, nine or more, ninety ninety five percent of the, the amplifiers we sell are solid state because tube is far more uh, complicated, far more expensive, and maybe uh, a bit touchy for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, they don't dare to use this because it's, it seems that it could expose <laughs> in, in the next second, you know. Uh, that's absolutely not true, but that's maybe the feeling. The feeling, no? Yeah. Uh, you think that this kind of amplifiers, they need uh, uh, special speakers? Like, uh... it, it, it depends. Uh, some, um, some tubes, uh, like the famous 300 Bs, for example, don't produce much power, so uh, they need to have a high sensitivity speaker to express their quality. Um, but if, if you look at more uh, common uh, tubes, both like uh, KT88, so like uh, uh, 6655, 50, or the AL34, uh, uh, all those tubes are able to drive. Uh, normal speaker with uh, average uh, sensitivity so i think uh, they can be used in a lot of combination with um, no or almost no problem okay, okay. Uh, as well uh, you got uh, here uh, really good products like uh, as i see uh, uh, what do you think the level of um, uh, fidelity uh, fidelity level the highest fidelity level do you think uh, 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 I mean, I mean, again? yeah, we're gonna say again. Uh, you got the many products here, and I, uh, and I want to um, focus in, in the speakers. Okay. Yeah. And what I want to ask you, um, your best product, how much percentage of uh, highest fidelity mm -hmm. uh, is done? I don't know if the question in English. You know what I mean? How much fidelity, uh, highest fidelity level, mm -hmm. I would say. Uh, one of your best speakers will be. <laughs> you know, percentage, that's uh, very, very uh, touchy to, to express things like that because, uh, well, we everybody knows that uh, true high end, I mean, top of the line products are very, very expensive. They are really for the happy few and good for them. Uh, I don't sell such products here. Uh, so my uh, to, to give an idea to your people, uh, my uh, most expensive speaker here for the moment must be a focal of uh, nine thousand euro per. That's a lot of money. But if you look at the Utopia uh, series from Focal, it's, uh, it's that's really, really more expensive, you know. So I don't want to express it like like that. I think that. You, you can have the best of a system if you don't take the wrong way to build it up. I mean, wrong way would be to search for a, a, a song. If you go the reverse way, if you listen to your music until it's the most convincing for you, 
just for you. Uh, I always say it's your alone between your two ears. There's nobody That's else. Nice, nice well, answer, nice answer. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, usually, yeah, yeah. Say, so, actually, most of the people is what, what they want, you know. And yeah, sure. To feel so, really so, good with the sound, yeah. and even if not 100 percent is impossible, but uh, even if not 90 or whatever. But you, you know, the, uh, I want to, to to go back at the beginning mm. of your question because I'm absolutely uh, convinced that some cheap products are truth to music, truth faithful to music. Uh, I, I mean, you have the, you know, in French we say uh, fidèle à l'esprit ou fidèle à la lettre. It means it's the spirit or is the, you know, the, the letter. Uh, and it, 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 if it has to be specific, uh, on each, each detail of the music, scale, depth, uh, uh, tone, and so on, dynamic, of course, it must be uh, very expensive. But luckily, we don't need that. We, we don't need, if you can afford it, well, good for you, but you don't need that to uh, enjoy music. And I know some little radios, you know, uh, just uh, in front of your window that gives you the spirit of the music, uh, a lot of pleasure. And I think I'm convinced that you can find this at each level uh, of, of price. And uh, the idea is just remember it's for you. So take your time, listen to it. And when you feel it's good, then you can be sure it's good for you. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. It's, it's, well, in something mean, it's called the project. Uh, one of the things we want, we, we're searching for is for the, um, looking for the perfect sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we, uh, as we see, it's not impossible the perfect sound. No, it's uh, each person got its own way to listen to music. As the, as I told you, uh, my brother is crazy about the, the sound. Mm -hmm. But I meet meet people like uh, I did uh, one interview uh, to my neighbor, and he he's thirty years old, uh, very young, mm -hmm. and he listened musically from the fifties mm -hmm. with the this uh, not dirty. I don't know how to say it. Dirty sound. Uh, from the, the uh, sound from the 50s. Yeah, you know? yeah. And he loved it and he doesn't want yeah, anything, yeah. anything better. He told me he wants this sound. Yeah. Because he uh, because he said they recorded like this and mm -hmm. I want and he loved it. So I, I like uh, this for you. I, I really like it. No, no, no. Let's see if if you go uh, uh, you know uh, way more uh, early in, in the times it so some people are asking themselves uh, if uh, Mozart or Bach had known this modern piano of the 18th or 19th yeah. century. What? It, it, it doesn't make sense to, to ask you. It, they, they did what they, with what they had under their hand at that time. Maybe they were uh, able to, to uh, figure something more uh, perfect, but uh, they did what? Well, they could at that time, and, and I think that's that. I like the, the example you gave me with uh, this little. Uh, 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 it's my friend, my, my neighbor, yeah, actually. Yeah, okay. And we meet, uh, uh, we meet together from this, so okay. it was really nice. Uh, well, and finally, uh, I would like to, if you can recommend us an album or you discovered in early times, so or like a really good album you, you like to. But yeah. now, I mean. Uh, Wow, that's uh, or, it's it's. Or what do you recommend to put uh, in your your house or? I I don't know. Uh, I, I would just uh, maybe I would speak about a recent uh, a recent uh, uh, discover. I like the uh, pianist. Uh, it's a Turkish pianist. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's Fazil Say. Um, and this guy uh, has just a new album with uh, uh, some uh, back uh, music for keyboard. And that's absolutely amazing. It's very, very uh, unconventional in my opinion, because it's far more lively and uh, even funny. Uh, and speaking of, uh, you know, funny when you, you are talking of, uh, of back, that's 
so, so, you know, you, you are speaking of someone, uh, it's a reference, it's quite, uh, oh, it's, it's, it's austerity, mm. uh, it's uh, religion, it's, uh, it's mathematic, uh, it's a very, very rigid music for some years. If you if you don't like back, try with Fazil Sai. That's absolutely amazing. It's it's uh, it's a poet, and it's uh, I, I like it very much. And uh, to speak about something else, uh, more uh, uh, modern, uh, I would say Jeremy. C'est comment le, le nom de la de la de la, la batteuse flamande? Okay. Ah oui, ok. It's, it, it's, it's, it's from here, from Belgium? Yeah, it's from Belgium. Okay. That's why okay. I, want, I want to, yeah, 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 to yeah. mention it. So it's Isolde Lassoun. Uh, we will write it later. Yeah, yeah. Write it. Okay. And uh, it, it's, it's a little bit in the Gainsbourg way of doing music. Uh, it's five uh, songs in French, five songs in English. And uh, the album is... Uh, Oh dear, uh, and it's it's brand new and uh, it sounds really nice. Uh, as uh, as the fuzz inside, I mentioned it, the, the, the piano is absolutely uh, brilliant. So uh, these are my two recommendations for this day. If you come next, <laughs> maybe day, tomorrow. Uh, we'll have another. <laughs> okay, Pierre, uh, thank you. I'm gonna finish in Spanish the yeah. interview. Um, bueno, chicos, eh, hemos estado con Pierre. Eh, me quedo con las recomendaciones y sobre todo con que cada uno la música la tiene que escuchar para sí mismo. Y bueno, ha sido un placer. Eh, Pierre, merci, merci, and thank you very much. Eh? Thank you very much for, for the invitation. Eh? Nice, eh? My pleasure.